Let's take a look at initiators. Initiators are a special category. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at PPAS, PPAS AB, and P selection. First let's go ahead and look at PPAS. PPAS is just a simple holder for a particle group. Um, it shows up as PPAS because the group right now is listed as none. As soon as we change that to any group it's going to go ahead and show them as a red particle group. Um, we could just as easily switch them to green or blue and now it's going to be affecting blue particles. Uh, this is the same as coming over to the group section and dropping in a red or a blue. Um, so, and we, we can just as easily change any of these just by switching their group uh, designation right there. So that's PPAS, very straightforward. PPAS AB um, is a method for comparing particle groups. Anytime you want to take a look at two particle groups at the same time and figure out things like um, when they come close to each other or when they hit each other, uh, then we want to do something. Uh, you're going to have to use PPAS AB. Uh, you cannot use um, a red and a green um, setup like this. Maybe you want to just try to compare their position information. Uh, this is um, oh, this is a situation where you have the operators actually acting in parallel, and so their information is actually not going to be synchronized. Um, you would have to um, line them up in series or have this one be in a child dynamic set. Um, the way to get around that, of course, is to use PPAS AB. Uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and specify group A. Um, we could say any of these groups. I usually tend to put group A to be the group that we're most concerned with. Um, let's just go ahead and say red. And group B, we'll go ahead and say green. Uh, we've got some shooters out in the scene here and a disabled black box. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens as red and green compare each other and the different ways that we have to compare them. Um, we're going to go ahead and make this a situation where we're going to create a different group. First we're going to get a black box from the M3D vectors called uh, V average 2. This averages two vectors. Um, we're going to go ahead and expose their position outputs and connect those. And then we're going to use that to feed into a position born. Who's going to born a blue one per call uh, with speed of zero. And let's set their lifespan to be rather high. Okay, so this average position is going to come out here. So let's take a look. What happens here is the way it's set up right now, it's set to the all method. And so what happens is every red particle it's going to do a comparison against every green particle. And each of those pairs are going to be outputted here. Every A positions pair with every green positions pair um, through each and every particle. That's going to be a lot of comparisons. Um, let's just go ahead and see what happens here. Right now we only have one red and one green. So you can see that as they start off, um, we're finding their two positions and average, averaging them and creating a blue particle. On the next frame, they move forward a little bit until they keep going, keep going. And we want to see what happens when we start to get more particles in here. Okay, suddenly we have uh, two red, two green. Now what's going to happen is we've got a situation where we're set to all. So this red here, who's born first, he's going to do a comparison with this green and create a blue particle there. And then this red particle is going to do a comparison with this green particle. And he's going to born a particle here. This red particle is also going to do a comparison with this particle. Born a particle in here. And he's going to do a comparison with this particle. And born some particles there. So this is what all does for us. Every red is going to compare with every green. And those pairs are going to be outputted here. And this is all happens in one time step one time sample. Okay, we'll go ahead and just scrub this out and see. We can see those other ones kind of being born kind of alongside there. This is the comparison between these two guys. And it's really going to start to get hairy as soon as we start to get more particles coming in. And so it's going to be doing comparisons between each red and each green. And so that's going to end up being quite a bit of comparisons, especially as we get further out in time and the longer they live. Uh, be aware that this is going to be computationally intensive. 
Um, so there are some mechanisms we have that are going to allow us to optimize that. Um, let's take a look at distance. Distance is the first method. We're going to go ahead and set this to 20. And what this will say is, okay, when a red particle is within 20 units of a green particle, then go ahead and output that pair. But until then, don't output anything. So what we see is these two guys, they're too far away, nothing happens. As soon as they're within 20 units, um, must not be within 20 units. Let's go ahead and make that 30 units. Now we get some blue particles being born in there. Okay, so this distance is going to require that this red be at least within this distance uh, to that green. It, anywhere under 30, if it's 10, if it's 0, if it's 1. See, this one's being born here. We got some guys coming close enough there, so they go ahead and create some particles. Average position. See more of these guys here and these guys here. So, this is another way that we can uh, kind of minimize or limit that comparison as it happens. Then we have another option. We have uh, only the nearest. And what this means is let's say red finds 50 green particles nearby. And we want to detect, okay, so red's within 30 units of 50 greens. If we say only the nearest, then only the nearest green is going to be outputted. That one red is going to be outputted, and then only the nearest green is going to be outputted. So that's how that works. Um, if you set only the furthest, then that red particle, and then only the farthest green away from him. Uh, and if you set both of these, then the nearest and the furthest will both be outputted. That one red, and the nearest green, that one red, and the farthest green. All in one time sample. Okay. Uh, next we have particle size. Particle size is going to take a look at each particle size, and it's going to use it as kind of a, a distance comparison. So the smaller they are, you see these guys right in here, um, their sizes are going to overlap and they're going to go ahead and they created a blue particle right there. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. The next one we have is particle shape collision. 